Kaya, aka Kaya Wire. It's your boy Phil, aka Phil Bucks. And today we're going to be doing like a mukbang, I guess, slash Q and A. Um, I asked on my Instagram. He asked on his as well, but I think I got more questions. Um, because they like her more. <laughs> we asked y'all like questions y'all been wanting to ask us or want to know about us. Um, basically as a welcome back um happy new year everybody it's 2022 mm -hmm. and we got a lot of great content for you all um new year new us no, i'm just playing car <laughs> so happy new year everybody as you can see ari has gotten really big yeah, too much. She'll be one, and then we have another one on the way. Baby Zay. So we're gonna vlog that whole journey. Well, the rest of it because it's about to be over <laughs> in two months as well. But it's okay. Um, I have the questions right here. We done after this too, by the way. One boy, one girl. Why what? are you lying to Just them? quit while you're ahead, right? No, he just... is showing out for YouTube. <laughs> no, that's just crazy. Just playing. Anyways, we got some McDonald's. Um, we was craving like burgers, so we got burgers and fries. We got that... two cheeseburgers. Everything wanted to close all early. Yeah, so. everything closed early. We was gonna get, I think, either Sonic or Chick Fil A, but they closed early. I don't know if it's because like of New Year, but they closed. I guess at five. They acting totally different because it's twenty twenty two. Yeah, they closed it. super early. Six. Another thing, excuse me. Don't judge our setup. We're trying to figure out where we're gonna do our YouTube videos at. We're currently, of course, in our room on the floor, a little intimate session talking session <laughs> but yeah so don't judge our setup okay we're gonna show y'all the real us ain't nothing fake none of that amen always pray over your food now it's important it really is and check your burger because let me tell y'all before we start we got donkey donuts yesterday and I was eating my donut, and someone told me to look at my donut, and I looked at my donut, and it had mold on it. So, at this point, I just always want to check my food now, because I'm going to have time. And I'm pregnant, so I can be getting sick, you know? I just finished having a cold, because of this child. And I crushed mine, so. Yeah, so if he had anything on his, you would never know. I might be a superhero, because I don't know, but... I'm okay. definitely going. Okay, so. Hmm. He fucking that shit up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Stop, y'all. I like this question. Okay. Because it's more like a story time. How did you find out you were pregnant? Okay, so with her. It's a crazy story, long story. Maybe I can get that another day. But long story short, <laughs> we woke up in the middle of the night because we had two dogs previously. If y'all know, y'all know. Um, we heard them barking because I think in our house at the time, the AC was off. Or not off, but like it was broken, basically. And the maintenance people still didn't fix it, so... They were downstairs barking. We was like, they probably hot. So we went down and check on them. And I had already bought a pregnancy test. Um, people talked me into it, like my mom, my friends, because I was like, sorry y'all, she be, she always gonna be up under me. Um, I was already like five days late on my period, so I just happened to pick one up. But from a previous pregnancy that we had, which miscarried. I didn't want to buy a test because of that experience. Like we got positive tests and negative tests that time. So I was like, I'm not about to waste my money on no tests. But once I took it at 3 a.m., I waited for it. Y'all, my heart was beating so fast because I'm like, oh my God. And I waited for it. It was a digital one. So I waited for it and it's got pregnant. So that's how I found out with her. And then with him, 
what was it, 4th of July? Yep. It was the 4th of July. My mom came into town. This is where we were living in Texas. Um, she came into town or whatever, and I just kept complaining about nausea. Hold on, y'all. Okay, y'all, so we back. We just have a little malfunction. Anyways, so basically, yeah, my mom was in town or whatever. I was feeling nauseous. Um, my period was, like, not coming. It was supposed to come. It didn't come. Um, so I waited actually before my period oh. no was it was it before my period i took one before my period was supposed to come mm -hmm. on base did i take one on base mm -hmm. okay yeah see i took one on base and that one was negative so i was like okay but this was way before we moved off base like we moved off base on like june 30th i guess mm -hmm. and i guess they that's when they're saying that i supposedly got pregnant i don't know but yeah that happened so i took two pregnancy tests i think like when i was like two to three days late but they came out negative so i'm like okay so my period still didn't come we on the fifth day now and i took a test and i'm like you know what it's gonna come out negative again like like it's, it's i'm wasting my lunch long story short i'm like oh it's negative i come back in the bathroom and it's a faint line and i'm like oh my god like i'm really pregnant and that's i still didn't believe it y'all i took like five tests after i took those two tests five of them. <laughs> so yeah that's how i found that out is what's this pregnancy plan like this one or both? We can answer both. Uh, yes and no. No, for me it wasn't planned. Me, it one. won't. It won't plan for me either. But I knew what I was doing. So, yeah. So basically, you wanted to have two kids. Of at this time? But not at, not at exactly. I'm saying at this, at time. this time. Yeah, no, nah, not at this time. So that means it wasn't planned. Yeah. I mean, of course you know what you're doing each time you have sex with somebody, but that don't mean that it necessarily was planned. No, nah, I definitely won't plan. Kids are expensive. Yeah. Kids are expensive. This pregnancy wasn't planned. There really won't. I, I was so caught off guard. Yeah, I was shocked. Because like two kids, we're going to have two kids under two. Yeah, it was funny. I thought she was pranking me at first, y'all. I ain't even going to lie. She said, bro, tighten up. I said, what? thought she was joking. She ain't joking. No, I'm not joking, honey. <laughs> it's okay. More blessed. Very, very. To have our girl and then have our boy, so then we could be done for like, you know, some time. They close together, so you know, December through what March, it's a very expensive time for me. But that's okay. Dad comes through; it makes it happen. Okay, since we're on that topic of, well, I just said um two kids under two somebody said how do you feel about having two under two i am personally like me because i'm a stay-at-home mom are you okay yeah i'm good i'm a stay-at-home mom so for me now that it's getting like closer to the time to have him which i think he's already going to come early i am like overwhelmed like this is like a transparent moment right now because I already feel overwhelmed about it being that like she's like super spoiled right and then she's so spoiled to the point where she only wants me half the time like <laughs> her dad mm -hmm. will be trying to take her and you know help me or whatever help me get rest and she will just cry 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 until I pick her up carrying me and then we're trying to like transition her to her room but the other night that went horribly wrong. She didn't go to sleep till 6 a.m. And she was in here screaming like we was trying to kill her. So I I am just personally overwhelmed. How do you feel? The same way. I think I'm more so overwhelmed because it's just like 
like she said, like whenever I try to help her, she kind of makes it hard because she only wants her mom. So it's like, I'm not really helping for real, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna try to change that when he come out, even though he's probably gonna be super attached to his mom. But I think he's gonna be really attached to me for the simple fact that I'm gonna breastfeed him. So, you know, that's that's gonna be a factor that plays into it. But for the most part, I mean, we just gotta see. Hopefully as she is older, I know she probably won't transition out of it as easy being a mom as a girl, but hopefully, yeah. you know, she starts to come to me more so I can help her mom out. Cause I know it could be overwhelming taking care of two kids all day. But I think she's trying to train to just, train, uh, sorry y'all, transition to being a daddy girl. Yeah. So she be wanting to come to you a lot more now. Um, what is something you wished you knew before having a baby? Whoo! A lot. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> A lot. A lot. A lot. It is far from easy. So don't think. Oh, I want to have a baby. I want to have a baby. I want to have a baby because of this. I want to have a baby because of that. Because those reasons, I guarantee you, are not enough for you to go ahead and go through with that process, especially if you're just dating someone. And I only say that to say, because if y'all break up, it's going to be even 10 times harder for you. <laughs> and you as the mom, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have you're gonna have like the times where you're going through postpartum. Um, if you have a C section, you gotta heal by yourself. And it's just gonna be really hard. I personally didn't have a C section, thank God. I was able to do vaginal and I was able to heal a lot faster. Um, hopefully I can do that again this time. I think I can. I I got it. But some things that I do wish I knew was how expensive formula was, okay? Because formula, her formula is like 30 to $40 a can. <laughs> and a small one is 25 and that don't last you nothing but a good two weeks. If that. If, yeah. If that. <laughs> Especially when they get to eight ounces, your money is gonna like be going like this. <laughs> like that and like luckily, the um all right look here's what i'm gonna tell you luckily what because i was about to say luckily the pampers last but i was gonna say like it only lasted because we had like a whole bunch of boxes at first oh yeah but then once they you know transitioned out of like newborns and ones yeah you gotta you gonna continuously buy diapers like this girl right here you could change her and like literally five minutes later she got up she got pee in her diaper all over again she pees a lot don't know what type of schedule or system she's on <laughs> but but that's what she does she so, pees a lot i mean if y'all about to have a baby or whatever i'm trying to tell y'all clothes and stuff is important but like when the baby is like first born and stuff like that especially with covid we didn't really go out the house like that unless it was like to a doctor's appointments or if we had to go to the store mm -hmm. so my biggest thing would be stock up on them diapers, stock up on that formula if you, you know, formula feeding, and you'll be you'll be good for a while. It'll seem like a lot of money right then and there, so chip up, chip away at it like week by week, but you'll be fine. It it'll really save you a lot of money in the long run. I wish somebody would have told me to stock up on the formula just in case breastfeeding didn't work out. Yeah. Because I was so set on breastfeeding her. But like she was a type of baby that gets really irritated. Like when the nipple comes out or she can't like latch or work really good. So she wasn't, I felt like I didn't want her to not be eating enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to make sure she was getting enough food. So that's why in the hospital, I was like, just go ahead and get, bring her a bottle. Because like, if you're not eating enough, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your weight gonna drop like that, and then your weight already can drop. Like when you in the hospital, like when the baby in the hospital, it will drop sometimes. So then that's why, like, the next day or two, you have to take to a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She eat a lot now, 
And another thing, I wish people would have told me, don't listen to people when they say you're going to have a big baby. Because when she came out, she was six pounds, 13 ounces. And zero to three plus was like still big on her. She couldn't fit nothing. So we had to go out again, unfortunately. Take her out when she's not even supposed to be out for real. And then take her to the mall, get some more clothes. We had to get newborns. And her size was weird because preemies didn't fit. So newborns in certain like... I guess like different brands would fit. Like Target newborns is big. The Target's clothes is big. I don't know what Target, what type of baby is going to Target. Like <laughs> I don't know what they base their size off of, but Target has big clothes. Target crazy. Like that, that mess is oversized. Man, I wish somebody would have told me not to buy a lot of clothes in one size. Because once she got to a three to six, six to nine, and now nine months, 12 months, you know what I'm saying? We have to go sh on shopping sprees to buy her all this stuff because she doesn't have it or she didn't, she doesn't already have it. Like, bro, we have spent so much money like buying her more clothes because like we only bought zero to three months and newborns. Yeah, <laughs> in Texas, half her clothes took up half our closet. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was ridiculous. So, do you want any more kids after this? Yes, we want two more kids. Not right now, of course. <laughs> when Ari and Zay are about two and three, that's when we think we'll try again for another baby. Maybe. Yeah, I just said think. <laughs> but we still do want two more kids. Okay, what is some advice you would give young parents? Okay, listen. It's going to be far from easy. There's going to be times where y'all argue just for being frustrated because the baby won't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's going to be times where y'all don't want to be bothered with each other for real, for real, because y'all ain't, ain't get no sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be times where the woman is going through the postpartum and you don't really understand it. So it's like, is she mad at me? Or, you know, is she mad at the situation? Is she just frustrated? Is she depressed? I know we personally went through that. And this is going to be another transparent moment. Um, I didn't know that I was actually, like, having, like, symptoms of postpartum. Like, when I just randomly cry or just stay in the room. Not really want to, like, eat. Just stuff like that. Or, like, just angry, just going off type stuff. I didn't know that those were, like, symptoms of postpartum at the time. So, like... He didn't know what was going on. And then that would cause like friction because it's like he didn't know like what to do or what was going on with me because I wasn't really like talking about it for real, for real. But what I did do was let him know and my mom know, please let somebody know if you're going through those type of symptoms because you don't want it to escalate where you want to harm yourself or harm your kid. Please let somebody know. I always tell people this. Young moms, expecting moms in general, I always say, please let somebody know if you're feeling, you know, depressed or feeling down, feeling just like you having all these symptoms and you don't even know that it's postpartum. Please let somebody know. That could be like my biggest advice just because I went through it and I let people know around me so that they would know and be aware. Also... Please be patient with one another. Like, I know me personally as the mom, I was trying to do everything. Like, I mean, I'm trying to change her diaper, trying to feed her, trying to hold her, trying to put her to sleep. I try to do everything. Please let somebody help you. It is okay to let somebody help you. Being a first-time parent, being a first-time mom, you're going to be really protective over your child. You're going to want to do everything. Please don't do that because that's how you get very overwhelmed. I know me personally, I got like very overwhelmed and just sad all the time and angry and just crying a lot because I wanted to do everything myself. But him and my mom were a good help. He was a good help when he was there um, being with the army. He only got like, what, three weeks? 
three weeks to be with us and then he had to go back to Texas. So that's why we moved to Texas because I was like, I cannot do this by myself. Like, I can't. So please, if you have help, take the help. Don't be stubborn. Don't be like, I got it, I got it. Because that you don't. Well, you can have it by yourself, but if you have the help, <laughs> please take the help. I'm trying to tell you, like, because when you overwhelm yeah. yourself and you stretch yourself out trying to do everything by yourself, you kind of lose, you start to lose a grip on everything. So just take the help. And my advice, mainly for the fellas, like, be a help. It's going to be hard because, like she said, like, y'all got to be patient with each other and y'all going to be frustrated. But y'all did it together. She ain't do it by herself. And you definitely do it by yourself because you didn't carry the baby for nine months. So, you know what I'm saying? Be there. She, she didn't did everything. So it's time for you to step up and try to help her in any way possible. Like, it's a lot, but... I mean, to show your appreciation for her carrying the baby and and sticking through it, you just gonna have to step up and like really be a father and be the best that you can be because nobody's perfect. You gonna make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, but as long as you learn from them and correct them next time, I do too. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So another thing, <laughs> and this is the problem we having now. Save your money, okay? Because <laughs> even though you might have like a big lump sum of money, you might be like, "Oh, I got it, I got to spend." Please save, because I'm 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 here to tell you that baby gonna run out of formula, pampers and wipes when you don't got no money. <laughs> Yo, like, please like, save for your money. Real, like when we got money, I'm trying to tell you, like her formula be to the top. Like it never, it seems like it never runs out. Mm -hmm. As soon as we down to like our last and. Like, we might be done not last, like, a couple of days before payday or something. But that's, like, the crucial time because you can't just, it's not like you can be like, I'm going to wait a couple of days. She got to eat. The baby got to eat. Exactly. So, you know, like. And if you ain't breastfeeding, that milk ain't for free. Okay. Save it, man. You know, when she, when they, when they get older, I keep saying she because I already, but when they get older, kind of gets a little better because, you know. Target, Kroger, Walmart, they all got those little baby jars. And they can eat, like, once they get, like, at least one, they can eat what we eat. Yeah. So, so it's going to be much easier, but... They got them little baby food um, jars and everything like that. So those make it better because if they can't drink the milk, you know, they can, they can get a little bit of baby food, maybe some juice or something like that. But until then, yo, I'm trying to tell you, if you ain't stacked up on formula or something or, or whatever... Be hit. Yeah. So, save your money. You don't need everything. You don't gotta keep up with everybody. No. But that's the best advice I can give y'all. And if y'all ever have like, you know what I'm saying, more questions or I didn't answer something, please be with me. I am very nice. I like to give mothers advice or stuff because I still struggle now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. Military life and uh, living in another state. I liked that question too. You can start because you have a soldier. Um, <laughs> all right. So, anybody looking to join the military, don't listen to what anybody really got to say for you. Unless it's facts about like what they're saying, you can actually look it up. Absolutely. Do not, do not listen to what somebody else tells you about it. For me, it's a bittersweet experience. Um, I haven't seen anything that I really don't like, but you know, waking up early in the morning to go work out. Yeah, y'all. Coming he be, back. He be going by 4 a.m. Coming back, <laughs> taking a shower, then going straight to work. And then like coming home to these two lovely ladies, you know, you don't get no nap. You don't get a nap. So... That right there, you know, that's that's the part I really don't like. But for the most part, it's pretty cool. Like, you make a lot of friends in here. And, like, these people are actually real, especially because they can relate to what you're going through since y'all all in the military. 
So, you know, great friends. I got I got friends in Texas, Florida, all of them. We still keep in touch, everything like that. Um, and they, I keep in touch with their wives. Great people. They're great people. Um, what else? You learn a lot of life skills in here, man. Like, people just think it's like, training to go to war or something like that it is nothing like that at least not for me like it's not like that 24 7 let's put it like that yeah you got to stay ready just in case but for the most part you just learn this stuff just learn this something every day even if you don't think that you're learning something i guarantee you there won't be a day where you go to work and you will not learn something that you probably need down the line connections are great so many people do so many different things outside of the military that you don't even know until you get to get to know somebody. But I met a lot of people. Like I met photographers, people who just do all types of stuff, man. So um, living in another state is great. Um, before this, before I went to the military, I thought I was gonna be in Richmond for probably and we said like a good three, four weeks, more years. Three, four years, right? After graduation. And the craziest thing was like doing that, it was going, it was going to take a lot, but it wasn't going to take a lot. Um, we got family up in there. We got family up in Richmond. So, you know, it would have been easier for us to be up there for right now, only because of the family <clears throat> um, connections and the family help. Um, if we moved out of state, we don't really got that. Like we don't got that right now. So not as much, cool. at least. So it would have definitely been hard without the military. Like they kind of take care of my house and stuff like that. Um, so it made it easier for us to move out of state and start new. And it was probably the best decision we ever made. Absolutely. Uh, military life for me, as a army spouse, it can be very hard. It can be very emotional. Um, sometimes they're gone for long periods of time. They could get deployed. I mean, gone for like a year or more. Like it, it can be very tough, but it's very amazing. Like it makes you look at your spouse. Like you are the most strong person. Like I used to tell them all the time, like, I am so proud of you. Like, cause the army is far from easy and the stuff that they go through. I didn't hear many a stories. This, oh, excuse me. It is not easy. So for him to branch out and do that for not only us, but for our kids to set them up for life, it's like amazing. Like I just, I love being an army spouse. I brag about it all the time, you know. But when I was pregnant, it was very hard. Like him being in basic and being away from me, I had like a lot of breakdown moments. I was like sad a lot. Um, I know when he came home from winter break, when he left through that door, I was crying so hard. Like, and then while he was in there, they tried to say he caught COVID. So that made the experience longer for us to be away from each other. Hey, let me tell you. It was like really tough. Edging was like the worst feeling ever. Not because I felt bad. I mean, I felt fine. I didn't feel like I had COVID. But when they told me I had caught COVID, I was like, bro, ain't no way. I didn't I didn't made it this long without having COVID. Like, and it's nothing to brag about, but I would go into stores. I didn't have my mask on or something like that. And like I've never I didn't have COVID at all. But it's and then when I got to the army, I got tested for COVID three times. And they told me, you know, I was negative, I was negative, I was negative. Then my first week in basic training, like, they got something called yellow face. You go in, um, kind of like quarantine, monitoring or whatever. I don't know if they still have it or not, but they had like, you know, we'll be monitored real closely. And then they would test you like the week right before like actual basic start before you actually doing training. And they, they called my name. Like, I was like one of the first names they called. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on. That's the, these are people that's, that's like not positive. Like, what's going on? And they told me, step out of line. I step out. They were like, go pack your stuff up. The drill sergeant was a douchebag, too. <laughs> Brett said, Brett said, all right, y'all got COVID? 
you got 10 minutes to go upstairs, pack your stuff up, and be back downstairs and break. I was like, oh, that is so messed up, bro. But I know when he called me, I was so upset. Like, I was like, are you kidding me? And that's really what um, connected me to our friends, like the friends we have. I connected with their wives. And it was amazing to have them to talk to. Like, we talked every day, all day. Like, it was no time we didn't talk because we were all so hurt and upset about it. Like, being that they were going to be gone away from us for even longer. So, that's why I say that to say, like, he is, like, very strong, like, courageous. Just, he's just amazing, like. To go through that and then to still push through. Because some people was just giving up. Like, a lot of people, he told me a lot of people just went home or got, like, take, they just got themselves taken out of the army, I guess. Right? Yeah, one dude. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's so great. We're not even going to talk about that. But, yeah, a lot of people was just getting taken out. And they was just like, I'm going home. Forget it. He did that. And then he did AIT for six months. Like, And what? I had to wait there for about a good three or four. That's what I'm thought. saying. Like, what? It's amazing, y'all. Living in another state. I love living in another state. I love living in the state that we're in now. We're in Georgia right now. I love it here. Okay? So I love great. it here. Um, Texas? Uh, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> like, At least not that. At least not that yeah, time, not right? the area we were in. We were in San Angelo, Texas. I'm sorry if y'all hear them outside their ghetto. Like, they're still doing fireworks. Like, chill out. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah. In Texas, I did not like it at all. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about um, the base that we lived in. Well, I am going to say something bad. I'm not going to say their name. Okay? Because I'm, I'm not about to get him in trouble or nothing like that. But in Texas, where we were, they have the nastiest base on planet earth okay like they were just so trifling and listen this is a this is a advice i'm gonna give y'all do not live on base okay don't do it they're gonna give you any type of housing because it's cheap and it's just basically your bah right mm -hmm. don't live on base okay the apartment that they gave us at the time it had roaches so bad. Like, I don't know where they came from. He said they were in there before we moved in. It was like he went to, we went to inspect, inspect it. Yeah. He went to inspect it and it was like dead roaches on the floor or something. But he, excuse me, he said he just looked past it because, you know, like, it's whatever. Like, they're dead. But when we moved in, them Jays was alive. Like, just coming out of nowhere. And they couldn't find where they were coming from. One, one of them tried to eat food with me. Like, I sat down. Took them food out. Bro just came out the world where he, he was ready to eat with And me. then there's like no possible way that they could come from us because we didn't even bring any furniture in there. We The whole time we lived there, transparent moment again, what's up on an air mattress? Like there's no way that they could have came from us. We didn't even have that much stuff because most of our stuff was still in Virginia. So like I don't know if it was from the people before us, but it was so trifling. Like, and they didn't even care that we had a small infant. Like, it, it was just ridiculous. They, they fell in their back. Like, one of them fell in their bass and that. All, all types of stuff. And we were just... They didn't fall in there. We well, almost did. It. Yeah, it, it fell, fell near, near it. it. But either way, like, it was still, like, above her. Like, on the on the ceiling and everything. And I was just like, yo, that's, that's not acceptable. So, we ended up moving out. I did, like, our um, next place. Like, our apartment. It was so nice. It was gated and everything. Um, and it wasn't that much... But I didn't like the management. Like, the management was so unprofessional. Oh, my gosh. That is one thing I can't wait about, like, buying a house. Because we're going to be our own management, okay? Basically. <laughs> we don't got to worry about calling no rental offices or nothing. Like, we can take care of our own house, you know. But stay tuned for that. Um, Yeah, we answered that. Um, another question that I liked. What is that? How do you guys deal with the distance from your family? I personally take it a little harder than him. Um, just being away from my mom. Like, I've had my mom my whole life. So, it's, like, kind of hard. 
but I also like being independent, like, you know, being a married couple, like, you know, having my kids, um, just playing, well, not playing house, but you get what I'm saying, like having a family. I like having a family of my own because I can give her the life that I wasn't able to have, be, having a single mom. I like raising her in the household with mom and dad because I personally didn't have that. So it's just a very like amazing experience for me, but I do miss my mom a lot. Like I've been trying to beg her to move down here. Like I miss her a lot. I talk to her every day, all day, whether it's FaceTime, text. They are truly best friends. Yes, that is my best friend. I love her. We both heads like sisters, but that's my like, I love her to death. Sure. Um, my dad lives actually two hours away, which is great. Um, cause now Ari can see her popping more. Um, we can go to visit, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have somebody like family in state basically, but it's still two hours away. It's kind of far. Um, the drive seems farther than two hours. Hey, no, 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 like. <laughs> Especially going home. Yeah. Like coming back home. Cause we went, we went to Atlanta, right? Like when did we go? Christmas Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve. And that was like the longest ride back home, I felt like. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I ain't even gonna hold you. That journey was long. Like, I, I went to sleep and woke back up like. And then it was kind of miserable because we were both sick. We got sick from her. She didn't have COVID or anything. We, did, we don't have COVID. I just wanna put that out there. We had a cold. We took her to the doctor. They said it was like a cold. Um, but she gave it right to us because she kept sleeping in the bed with us, coughing in our faces. Man, bro, that, <laughs> she would just <coughs> right in your face. That yeah, so. so it was very miserable for me. My nose was stopped up and everything. <laughs> and you was really sick. I caught it the worst. I think he had like the sinus cold, so it was like way worse. But we didn't get out the car or anything. Just want to let y'all know, we didn't get out the car. We went to the little drive through um, holiday lights or whatever. Yeah. It's pretty fun. It's but pretty nice. um, how do you deal with the distance from your family? Um, I really don't care. No, let me stop. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you not um, playing. <laughs> no, I, I don't care and I do care in a sense. I don't care because I know for a fact that like, How do I see it? We only like six and a half hours from Richmond. So Yeah. If we it, drove back and forth like I don't even know yeah. how many times and we only been here a month. A good month. <laughs> it's, it's not even it's not even the fact that like, you know, it's it's closer than it is to Texas. So if need be, you know, my family already come down to Georgia or down to Florida or whatever, so you know, they can always stop by. But yeah. For the most part, I like it. Um the distance from family, it really doesn't bother me because I got my family, you know, my, my immediate family, my kids, and I got my wife. So the biggest thing about joining the military was to get out of Richmond, get out of Virginia as a whole. So, I mean, I've come to terms with it, especially being in basic training, no phone, no nothing. Um, the only person I would call every weekend Every time I got a phone call, it was my wife. And it wasn't because, you know, I had a problem with my family and nothing. It was just a simple fact that I got to check on her, got to check on the baby. And this is who I really just wanted to talk to every time. Like, she was the only person I thought about talking to. Like, so, for... I mean, I would be having the biggest smile. I mean, cheesing from ear to ear. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I did what I was supposed to do. You know, I got out of Richmond. I took my family out of Richmond. And now we just here to start our own family, you know, create our own traditions and just do whatever. Um, not that far from Richmond, like I said. So when they want to come visit, they come visit. If we want to really come visit, we're going to visit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not that bad. Yeah. And me personally, my mom does visit. She visited in um, Texas and she visited here like twice so it's yeah 
We got FaceTime. I wish she was down the street or next door to our room, but it's okay. <laughs> nah, yeah. But, you know, we got FaceTime, got messages, all that stuff. It's not the same as in person, but... Yeah. I mean, that's the next best thing. And, like, really, as long as you feel the love, it's all good. Did you guys get married due to the military or because we weren't ready? Okay. Let me just say this. By my birthday, this man was ready to like already like mini propose to me, like because <laughs> we had been friends, but like we connected on a deeper level once we like got away from our old friend groups. Like it was just us, like you know. Um, he had I had his back, he had my back. So that's when we like officially started dating. We didn't already mess with each other when we were in our friend groups. We didn't even look at each other like that. But once we got away from them, it's like a different. It was like a different vibe. Like you know what I'm saying? Like not to say we like hate them or nothing like that. Yeah, <laughs> like I wish all of them the best. Like our old friend groups, I wish all of them nothing but the best cool success people, and blessings cool because we still like reach out from. T you know what I'm saying? Like some of them still reach out from time to time, or we'll reach out. You know what I'm saying? But it's like. We just connected like really fast, basically like as friends. And then once we started dating, it was just like, I know I, I'm just gonna be my husband one day. Like you can, you can, you can <laughs> tell me nothing. I, you can never like separate me from this girl. But we were already thinking about getting married. I feel like the military just pushed it faster. It did because like. Excuse me. Before he even started thinking about the military, we were already talking about like marriage and moving to um either Houston or Atlanta. Um yeah. I feel like it was a mixture of both low key, but not really because of the military, because like nobody's gonna make us get married or do anything we don't wanna do. <laughs> but I feel like like I said, that just made the process come about even faster. And we are like actually legally married. Like we got married in the state of Virginia. We have our marriage license and our marriage certificates. So no, this is not a fake marriage, honey. This is real. This is very much real. See the ring. Okay, this is real. <laughs> but I wouldn't have it any other way. Like even though we bump heads from time to time, it's just because I love, we like, we love hard. It's like our love is really strong. Um, he is the love of my life. He's the father of my kids. Um, I feel like God just made him for me and sent him to me. So, yeah. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> we got married because of the military. Nah, let me stop playing. Hey, let me stop playing. Stop playing. Nah. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> but, um, nah. Um. For a long time, I always knew that I wanted to marry her. Just by the way she made me feel like when we first started dating, like she said, like I felt that way, but if you get all right, I felt that way, but it was as a kid. Like I'm not saying like tenth grade, ninth grade. I'm talking about like, you know, fifth grade. When you first get your first girlfriend, you thought that you was in love type stuff. Like she just made me feel like a kid all over again. So, like, I mean, right then and there, I was like, yeah, can't let you go. I don't care. So, I mean, of course, we were still in high school. So, I was like, you know, probably not right now. It's probably going to be the best time. Um, and then once COVID hit and everything and I, the rest of our year got canceled, I was like, shoot, I mean, I could think about it more. It's just when's the right time to pop the question. And then when well, we're gonna have our little big wedding day. Um but COVID took a really big like had a really big impact on me going to the military right then and there. So um I just had to do it so she could get the the benefits and everything. So I didn't get to do it how I wanted to. I'm glad we're married, but you know, I didn't get to do it how I wanted to. But I wanted to make sure she was straight and definitely had the same benefits um or similar benefits to what i was getting 
while she was um, pregnant and everything, make sure she was taken care of. So yeah, like she said, we didn't get married because of the military. It just sped up the process. Yeah, basically. Um, like we already wanted to get married, but we had a time frame of when we wanted to do it, but it just came faster. Man. Yeah. So like we already had like plans. Okay, basically. We already knew like we want to do like a destination wedding and when, what time frame, like what um season, mm -hmm. and everything. But the military, like basically it sped up the process because we don't want a time frame. So we just had to do it at the courthouse. But it's okay. I mean, we still, which brings me to the next question. Do you guys plan on having a wedding? Yes, we do. We're going to do like a renewal vow type wedding, basically. Um, we don't know exactly when because we keep having kids. Um, <laughs> we were supposed to do it this year, but um, yeah. So <laughs> it's probably going to be next year or maybe late this year. I don't know because we plan on going out the country this year sometime. Not gonna say 21. when. Yeah, not gonna say when, but we do plan on um, going out the country, so you never know. Okay, last and final actual question, because we keep saying that. Because we keep saying that, this is the last question, this is the last question. Um, I just seen it, I don't know. Do y'all think the babies are gonna have the same birthday? No, I do not. Not at all. Um, I think he's going to come in February. My grandma keeps saying it. My mom keeps saying it. We keep saying it. People that see me out keep thinking that I'm about to pop. So. He's going to be here next month, y'all. Yeah, I think he's going to be here next month. Um, It's funny because my grandma keeps saying it. And she's the one that claims she, well, not claims. She says she dreamed about fish before I found out I was pregnant. And she was like, somebody having a baby. And it was me. So, she might be right this time. <laughs> Hopefully he does. Because, um, let me tell you something. Growing up as a kid, like me and my sister, we had two, like, our birthdays was close together. They were like four days apart. So, oh, yeah. growing up as kids, you know, we kind of always, not always, but we had like split birthday parties. And I know how. How upsetting that could be. Like, you know. Yeah, definitely. Having to share the attention. It's supposed to be your special day. So, yeah. hopefully he come in February. Can have his little time. Give it a little month or so. Even if he come, like, in the beginning of March. Yeah. Like. They can both have their own birthdays. Oh, they have their own special day. I know? feel like this year we're already going to have to kind of, like, like, set her birthday back. Just because, like, we're going to have um something for her in Timid Small especially if COVID is died down. If it's not died down, we're going to just have to, like, you know, wait. <laughs> because we were going to do um, something small and intimate, like with family, um, have, like, a cookout for her. We're going to come back to Virginia um, sometime in April. Mm -hmm. If COVID is not died down, um, we probably just have something small and intimate here to her to come here. We're like... I don't know, go to Chuck E. Cheese or something. I don't know. She's not going to really know. I mean, she's going to know, but she's really not going to know what's going on. So she's going to be like, okay, well, cake and gifts probably. Yeah. But I mean, we're still going to do that. Like on her actual birthday, um, we're going to get cake, gifts, you know, the whole nine yards. But yeah. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't believe our baby's about to be one. That's crazy. She act like she about four or five. Yeah, she already act grown. She, she be talking back everything, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. Her little hair coming out her bow. She's knocked out. Anyways, y'all. That is the end of this video. I know it was long, but I feel like that's good because this is like a coming back video. And it was very intimate. We let y'all in on a lot of our life that we barely let people know about. You know what I'm saying? So... Like he said, we were just trying to give y'all real raw content. Um, no hate to like any other YouTubes or anything. But I know sometimes they give like, you know, do like a lot of, you know, fake stuff. Like fake not stuff. fake stuff, but like, like fake content basically. More like stage or something. Yeah. Like so 
we just want to like be really transparent with y'all at all times um we're gonna do a birth vlog um so that's gonna be raw intimate y'all gonna see me going through contractions and stuff <laughs> so that's it make sure that you share this video with your mama your grandmama your auntie your whoever. mammy grandmammy <laughs> <laughs> your dad your boyfriend whoever anybody that's interested in joining the army anybody that's a young married couple anybody that needs advice on becoming a parent or being a mom going through postpartum come here okay this is the video to watch it's gonna be like an hour long but <laughs> it's gonna be filled with lots and lots of details in our ghetto um setup yeah make sure y'all you know like comment subscribe um, turn on your post notifications please do that um i don't know next video you know it'll be a, it'll definitely be a banger you know yeah it's not every video not gonna be like this definitely gonna give us something that y'all want to watch um let us know down in the comment section like what next videos y'all want or you know i can start back cooking with kaya wild oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> please please get her to start that back y'all oh my gosh i love that food come on baby <laughs> Why does she keep doing that oh no anyways y'all i'm your girl kaya wild and i'm your boy uh you know phil bucks but we on the road to 1k y'all 1k subscribers get us there We'll have like yes. a little giveaway or something. So we're not close, but we can get there. Exactly. So <laughs> make sure you share this video. Again, like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and we'll see y'all in the next video.